Hey, hey, what's going on? As you can see, there's a different background behind me than in my other videos. I'm gonna be shooting a lot of me talking, the A-roll stuff, from my home office now. So that's super exciting, and what's even more exciting is that I've been able to pay for this house and for this office and for all my expenses with my microgreens business. So it's amazing uh, to see how far my microgreens business has come, and I'm sure that you are probably interested in knowing what it entails to run this business, you know, what am I doing on a daily basis? So I wanted to make this video for you to really just show you what I'm doing in the mornings, right? Uh, I'm gonna make a few videos like this, but I wanted to show you my AM chores, my morning tasks. This is what I do every single morning, it doesn't change. And uh, this is one of my responsibilities that I still do for my business at this point. I'm working less than 10 hours a week and I'm still pulling a salary of over 60 grand from that business. So it's definitely working out well. And this was one of my goals when I started my business. I didn't wanna be working you know, every day slaving over the business. I wanted to have a business that can kind of run itself and have my freedom of time. So, and there's nothing wrong with you know, working a lot of hours for your business. Of course, it's totally fine in the beginning and maybe that's what you wanna do. Uh, you know, everybody's goal is different for their business, but one of the things that was important for me is working less but still making money. So I'm excited to show you right here in this video exactly what I do in the mornings when I head into the farm. For the best My Koreans content, be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you get notified on Tuesdays when I come out with new My Koreans videos. So I've been running my business for a few years now. I'm in my fifth year of business and uh, it's been going great. Like I said before, you know, one of my goals was to not spend all my time slaving over the business, but was to make it more hands-off, something that could bring revenue in for me, but that I didn't really have to be there all the time or be working all the time. One of the things that I got really good at is designing systems and putting these systems in place to get the things done and to keep the business moving, and then you know, kind of have other people do that work and that type of thing. But with that being said, I do still want to keep a little bit hands-on with the business, and I wanted to show you in this video, you know, what I do in the morning. I'm gonna take you step by step through the process, so let's jump right into it. All right, we're here in the Finest Foods Urban Farm. I'm gonna do some morning chores. These are the morning tasks that I do every morning. It's really just getting in here, washing my hands, um, you know, moving some trays around the room, and then watering is really the morning chores. And then after that, it gets into tray making and harvesting and all that. But in this video, I'm just gonna do the morning chores. All right, gotta grab a super rack. Bring it around. Now this is also a great time to unsoak seeds. It's getting into a little later in the day. It's around 12.30 right now, so I'm gonna unsoak these. Um, this morning I unsoaked my sunflower, so these are already done. I do those at 9 a.m., uh, which is a four hour soak. And then I let these wait until after 12, which would be the eight hours for these. And these I always aim for between eight and 12. So it's between eight and 12 hours on everything besides sunflower, basically. I used to uh, just soak my seeds overnight and I couldn't really control how long they were being soaked for. I would just have to do like an overnight 12 hour thing. But then I found this controller and this automatically puts water on my seeds in the middle of the night or really the early morning. So that way I don't have to worry about doing that manually. And then by the time I get in, at least the sunflowers are ready to be unsoaked. So it improves my efficiency and resilience. 
So I got my board up here. It looks like today is Saturday. We're taking out 10 radish and one micro mix. So looks like this is them. Wipe off the bottom of the weighted tray so that's ready to go for next time. And then I'm wiping these down to keep the racks as clean as possible. Not only the super rack, but the main go racks out there as well. And you don't want stuff falling into the trays beneath either. Normally I would want these to be a little bit taller when they come out of germination, but the problem right now is it just got really cold here in New York and my temperature control throughout the whole building is not perfect. So my germination room is at 65 right now and I prefer it closer to 68. All right, so we got these trays. I'm gonna bring them out under lights. It's not much room on that side, so I'm going to come on this side. And I'm typically just looking for a good way to put these out. There's no perfect solution right now, so I'm just going to start a new row. need those sturdy trays so you can do one-handed tray movements. All right, looking good. Hey, so I'm sitting here editing this video and I just realized that um, my morning chores are different on a harvest day than on a normal day. So what you're seeing here is a normal day. If this was a harvest day, at this moment in time where we're putting the trays out under lights that were in germination, at the same time that we're putting them out, we would also be pulling any trays that were for that day's harvest and we'd be pulling them off the racks and loading them onto the super rack and then wheeling that over next to the harvesting station. And the reason being is that we're pulling them now because we don't want them to get watered that day. We want the crop to be nice and dry when it's harvested and then also, uh, watering is a little messy, so when you water them, there would be a chance of getting water on the canopies of the trays that were to be harvested that day, and that's obviously the opposite of what you want. You want to be harvesting dry crops. So I just wanted to make this note here that this is a normal day. If it was a harvesting day, we would be pulling any trays that were going to be harvested that day off of the racks at this moment and onto the super rack. Next is watering. Always turn off your hose when you're not using it. I had a hose blow out once and if I wasn't in here, it would have flooded out the whole place. I keep the hose underneath my leg and that prevents the dirty hose from 
uh, getting near the plants and touching the plants. Before I jump into the watering though, go down into the comments for me and just let me know what is your least favorite farm chore? I just wanna know, please just let me know in the comments, what is that one thing that you just hate doing for your business? Um, if I'm being honest here, I think probably watering is the most annoying thing that I have to do, but that's probably because that's like the one thing I'm still doing every day. The tray making that I do a few days a week, it's only a few days a week. I also love tray making, so that's not too bad. But then if my, if my worker is out, and I actually have to do the harvesting, that's a pain in the ass. Although, uh, since I don't do much harvesting anymore, it's kind of refreshing to get into that groove again. So I have to say overall, watering is the most annoying to me, but let me know in the comments what you hate doing in your farm. Watering will vary based on uh, a few different things. It's based on variety, it's based on how old each variety is, and then also based on how heavy the trays are when you go to grab them. I noticed that these were a little bit heavier, which means there's more water in that soil and they don't need as much water. And as you can see, I'm moving the trays along the shelf um, as I go down because that'll prevent any of these little leaves from being trapped inside the tray right next to it. So I slide over using that little bit of extra space on the rack. And then I'll do this one. And then I'll kind of lift this one up in water and slide it over. And I'm keeping this side down so it's not pinching these leaves, but I can still slide it over to here and then let this side down without pinching those leaves. Just like that. These sunflowers are pretty developed. They're getting a pretty decent canopy at this point, but I'm just, I'm gonna top water anyway because uh, I want these hulls to loosen up and really get off of the plants. I seeded these very dense because I'm testing out some new seeds. And I didn't really know any better. So I really wanna get some of these hulls off so that way when it comes time to harvest, it's not gonna be as big of a pain in the butt. The plants are getting wet at that point, but that's okay, because we still have at least another three days before they're gonna get harvested, so that's plenty of time for them to dry back off before harvesting. This is all my cilantro. This is just one week apart. Um, they probably grow better with two lights versus the one that I commonly use. And you can see this tray actually has more hulls on it. And that's because I didn't leave this in germination as long as this one. So the longer you leave cilantro in germination, the better. It'll help pop off those hulls. Those are just coming out of germination. We put those out this morning. So um, 
you want to make sure to give them a nice hefty water because they haven't had water in three days since you made the trays. So that's all the watering. It's not done with the whole process yet because we still have to wipe off the hulls. I'm gonna do that right now. But as you can see, I mean, I got that done in about 15 minutes and there's well over 100 trays. So this doesn't take that much time to do watering this way. You don't need an automatic watering system, especially when you're first getting started. I mean, I've been in business for four years. I'm definitely at scale and even still this type of watering is totally working for me. All right, try not to get this tangled. Always turn that off and then we'll go swipe some hulls. So you always wanna start off with your cleanest, your uh, oldest plants and just get down in there and ruffle them up. Is it annoying? Yes. Is it a deal breaker? No. Can you still make money growing sunflowers doing this? Yes. And I mean, look at these trays. This is complete fluff. We're probably pulling two pounds off of these. And I sell that for 40 bucks. So a little bit of time each day does not add up to anything close to 40 bucks. Some of the plants will get damaged a little bit. That's all right. Got to get these hulls off though. Otherwise harvesting is crazy. That'll take forever. This doesn't take that long. All right, so you just saw exactly what I'm doing in my mornings for my microgreens business to keep it running smoothly. Um, I hope it was useful to see, you know, what I'm doing in the farm and how I'm running it and how I'm doing some of these morning chores. So uh, hopefully that was helpful for you. I hope it was. But if you want more information and want just kind of like a more deeper dive on specific topics in the microgreens business world, definitely go check out the product I launched with David from Micro Acres up in Canada. The product has been going really well. We've gotten a lot of good feedback and we actually just added in uh, kind of like bonus feature to the program where we're gonna do a live Q&A with all the members once a quarter. So that's a new thing that we're doing starting here in April. So if you haven't already checked out that program, now is probably the best time to go check it out as we start adding more features into it. So you can find that at microgreensmentors com. You'll see a video in there to learn a little bit more about it, but we're also adding this additional feature where you can ask us questions once a quarter, me and Dave at the same time. Check out the videos below to learn how to optimize your farm for the best layout, or watch the other video if you wanna learn all the different supplies and equipment that you need to actually start this business and run the business. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and don't forget that you can use that share button below to share it with anybody you think this may help. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.